Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this video we're going to learn about filter tabs. Uh, one of the most common topic that we use in D uh, digital signal processing or DSP. Uh, I've made, uh, I think, two or three videos on filters. Uh, this particular video we're going to know about, we're going to learn about filter tabs. What is the function of these filter tabs? Why do we need them? Second, we're going to visualize different type of noise that we have available. And what is the purpose of each of these noise? So in this particular video, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to combine your low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass filter, band reject filter, and RRC filter together. And we're going to apply these filtration processes on your noise source, which will be in a form of a different noise source. For example, we're going to visualize Gaussian noise source. Let's look at the block. Uh, in GNU video, we have noise source like uniform, Gaussian, Laplace, impulse. So we're going to visualize those noises as well. So the reason we need filter tabs. Uh, so in GNU radio, the cool thing about GNU radio is that you can either individually uh, get a video uh, filters from here. Like for example, if you want to look at low pass filter and just simply you can use this filter or you can use an FIR filter. Like for example, the one that I'm using, uh, and which is called a decimating filter. Uh, it will have certain parameters that you need. You need a decimation factor. For example, if your incoming signal is coming in, how much is going to decimate? So in decimation, just to understand the basic knowledge of filter, you don't need to decimate the signal. We're just using uh, one. So whatever is coming in, we're going to take that signal as is. And then the tabs are defined. What these tabs are, uh, based on the tabs, you can define what what is the behavior of the, this filter this particular filter is going to be so for example if i so for example in this decimating fir filter i'm using lp tabs now this lp tabs is a low pass filter so this is defined by this particular low pass filter tabs variable and now i can define a couple of things so i'm using a low pass filter tab the generalized filter is decimating fir filter but I'm also using low pass filter tabs to define the parameter. What are some of the parameters we generally define? We define your SAMP rate. In our flow graph, your SAMP rate is defined by a variable. I think it's 32 kilo. Then you need to define your cutoff frequency. What is the cutoff frequency of that? Second, you need to define your transition bandwidth. I already made a video on it. You can watch my previous video as well. What are these parameters? Uh, this one is just to define that you can use a low pass filter tabs and use a decimating filter to actually uh, perform the filtration process as you want. You can also use a low pass filter as well. And so, so SAMP rate is going to be same which is followed in your uh, green radio flow graph you have a cutoff frequency so this cutoff frequency right here is defined so this is your cutoff frequency so this is the cutoff frequency cutoff frequency is 14 kilohertz uh, let's just quickly look at it let me just move this out of the way so it's 14 kilohertz if you, if you can see this so this is 14 kilohertz. So anything that is above 14 kilohertz is not going to pass anything below 14 kilohertz it's going to pass. Then you have a transition bandwidth. Transition bandwidth is also defined by this variable, which is one kilohertz. For all the filters that I'm using, I'm going to go and explain the fabric and the taps of these filters. So one kilohertz. So basically, how smooth that transition of your curve is. So it's one kilohertz. The sharper it is, the the more computation power it requires. Uh, that's about it. Same thing. So this is for low pass filter. We're looking at visualizing the taps of low pass filter. Same thing in our decimating FIR filter. We're also using high pass tab. Now this high pass tab is in GNU video is defined by high pass filter tabs. And these filter tabs are defined by cutoff low frequency transition bandwidth. Transition bandwidth remains the same. Cutoff low frequency is given as two kilohertz. So anything so it's going to pass anything above two kilohertz. We're going to visualize that as well. And this is defined by HP tabs, which is high pass filter tabs. Then we have same thing. I have a decimating FIR filter, but it's the tabs are being defined by BP tabs. All right. So BP tabs, which, which means bandpass filter. 
and it will have these frequency component so this tab it has a gain whatever coming in is just going to multiply this as is you have a sample rate of 32 kilohertz you have a low cutoff frequency so it's going to pass a frequency between 6 to 10 kilohertz this is what it's going to pass anything above than that or lower than that it will not pass and now and the same thing goes for your band reject filter as well so we also have band reject filter taps these filter taps are defined like this you have bp low which is your band uh, band pass low and then you also have band pass high these few frequencies the low and high frequency will not pass anything above than that it will pass so it will reject the frequency which is given by bp low bp high all right so basically this is the opposite so if it's passing this frequency like between 6 and 10 is going to reject these frequency that's why the low and high component are the same thing now the second filter the uh, the fifth filter that i added is actually an, a rate root raise cosine filter now what this particular filter does it actually performs signal smoothing so anytime you're transmitting a digital signal it actually smooths out your signal all right, so it smooths out your transmitted uh, transmitted signal and receive signal as well. So this is a very important filter. It basically performs pulse shaping of your filter, and this is highly used in digital communication as well. So I made a separate video on it, uh, but in this video I have combined all of this. So let's just quickly look at some of the parameters. You also have these tabs. So I'm still using a generalized filter, which is decimating FIR filter right here at the bottom. And the tabs are being defined by this tab parameter. All right. So this is has sample rate of 32 kilohertz. Then you got to have a symbol rate, uh, how quickly the symbol uh, symbols are coming in. And, and you also have 0 0.35, which is actually your excessive bandwidth. This is your default value. Now, the next thing that you need, how many taps are going to be there? So this is defined by symbol per second, how many symbols are coming in per second times value. I've just taken a general value that I normally found, that are normally found, um, that that is normally found in the literature, which is 11. So 11 times SPS would give you number of tabs 22 the higher these tabs are going to be the more the tabs are going to be the precise your signal smoothing is going to be hence the more computation it requires so so basically this is what's going on in this flow graph now what we're going to do is this so we have a gaussian signal so individually we're going to analyze all of these signals we're going to visualize the noise at the same time, we're going to look at the output of these signals as well after passing through a low pass filter. So we are visualizing this. And as you can notice, this, this is my Gaussian source, which is going into a, uh, a time sink. This is just to visualize the type of noise. So by looking at noise, I think after this tutorial, you will be able to identify what type of a noise it is. All right. So this, this, this is the goal behind this, uh, behind this tutorial. So let me just quickly run this. And let me change this noise to uniform noise. All right. So let's just quickly change this to uniform noise. So uniform noise is that your noise is smooth throughout the spectrum. This is what it is. So noise is smooth out of the in the entire spectrum. You won't find like you know crazy spikes going up and down. It should be smooth throughout the spectrum. This is what we are after. And 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 let's just look at it. So let me just play this and this is so if you can observe this observe this this is quite smooth this is like quite smooth I mean you won't be able to observe that uh, so this is basically what the noise is so let me just simply change this let me just go to the property and change this to just noise so i don't want to just call it a gaussian noise so this is what this is the noise that is coming in and you're visualizing at input five so let me just quickly play this all right so let me just turn this all of these off so this is what a uniform noise in a frequency spectrum looks like in yellow i mean you're not seeing much you're not seeing much of a difference when you're looking at it in frequency spectrum but in time domain you can clearly see that the noise is quite uniform i mean if you can observe this that noise is quite uniform you have like similar spikes on top and bottom and things like that we're looking at a scale amplitude of one 
all right and now let's just quickly look at it i mean in the spectrum you're not seeing much now let's look at my low pass and high pass filter individually so you can see that in uniform noise what happens so so this is my actual noise so when i have a low pass filter turned on remember i had a cutoff so just just look at this cutoff my cutoff is at 14 kilohertz right and this is what i have set so anything less than 14 kilohertz it, it should pass and anything above then so anything above then uh, uh 14 kilohertz it will not pass and this is exactly what it looks like right here this parameter that we have selected let me just show you anyhow in low pass filter tabs so this is my cut off high so anything above than that it will not pass anything lower than that this is what it's going to pass so let me just play this graph again so check this out so you got to find the uniformity between this so let me just uh, close everything up so this is what a low pass filter looks like this is the actual noise which is in uniform uh, which is uniform and this is what a cutoff frequency looks like and the transition bandwidth as you can see is one kilohertz so it's quite smooth if i make this transition bandwidth a little bit higher this would start becoming fatter all right the next thing is let me just turn this off let's pass high pass filter so high pass filter if i were to look at the cutoff frequency this is just simple noise all right in yellow so the red thing that looks somewhere around two kilohertz. So anything above two kilohertz is going to pass. Anything less than two kilohertz, it will, it's going to actually attenuate that signal. This is what a high pass filter is doing. Now let's look at my bad pass filter. Anything in this bell shape, it will pass. Anything out, uh, outside of these, this bell shape in green, it's going to reject. So this is your bad pass filter. So remember I've set this to six kilohertz. A lower frequency and high frequency is about 10 kilohertz so right here as you can see this high is 10 low is uh, is somewhere here uh, is it's about six all right now let's turn this off and open band reject so it's gonna it's gonna attenuate all the frequencies between six to 10 kilohertz and it's gonna pass all the frequency that is above 10 kilohertz and lower than six kilohertz this is what a band reject filter is doing now let's look at the uh, uh, raise root cosine root raise cosine signal and this is what it looks like so this is that roll off rate all right and this is how it's going to smooth so anything signal is coming in is going to smooth it out like this because we're looking at gaussian noise and gaussian noise remember this that a noise signal has a wide bandwidth all right so it, it, it you have to define your bandwidth so it's going to take this signal up till here and it's going to pass this signal and it's going to reject all the rest of the signal so this is what a uniform signal look like uh, as you can see the uniformity between the noise source and things like that let me just uh, stop this so you can see the uniformity in this signal so this is the uniform noise signal that you're visualizing right now so let me close this and let me change this to gaussian now the filter uh, filtration process is exactly going to be the same now uh, let's look at my noise signal noise signal is generally smooth with spikes on it uh with with will have some and this is uh this is what we normally use to model our communication system thermal noises additive white gaussian noises and things like that and let me just zoom out on it as you can see this thing is not quite as uniform as 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 your uniform noise i mean it's not continuous uniform you can see the spikes here then you have lower spike then you have nothing here then you can have a spike in this so by looking at noise in time domain you can easily identify which type of a noise i'm working with and additive white gaussian noise is something that is coming in uh from uh from from communication system from thermal noises and things like that so this is the most common noise that we normally use to 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 in communication system and things like that i hope you're getting this um, and the process is exactly the same in the frequency domain you won't be able to tell at least i won't be able to tell but by in time domain i can easily tell what type of noise i'm working with now this was gaussian noise uh, now let's change this noise to laplacian noise all right so let's look at the laplacian noise and let's observe this now you probably look uh, previously looked at gaussian noise you, we, are, we have like spikes 
and then you have like a uniformity sort of let's look at this now when you observe this noise you can i mean you're not seeing any difference in in frequency domain but here in oscilloscope you can clearly see that you have some of the spikes are coming in like for example here here like you have like higher peaks as compared to gaussian noise all right uh, so this is this is the type of noise you can clearly see this you start observing here and then you can clearly see this 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 thing has higher peaks now by looking at this these are the type of noise we use to model uh, coming from your um, like you know uh, for image processing and when you're performing compressions and things like that so when you're performing like when you're doing image processing this is the type of noise that you are encountering which is sort of like laplacian noise for compression techniques and for image processing and things like that as you can clearly see this you will have these spikes coming in but either you have smaller spikes, but your some of the spikes are quite higher uh, as compared to Gaussian noise. So, and the rest of the stuff is exactly the same. I don't need to go through this band reject high pass. All the all all the other stuff is exactly the same. Now let's change this to a impulse impulse noise. Now, when I look at my impulse noise, let's look at this. Now, here you can clearly see the difference also in frequency domain as well. Why? Because you will clearly see that you have a spike which is coming in and going. It's generally it's a flat response, but you can clearly see that you have spikes coming in. And now when you observe this particular noise in frequency domain, you can clearly see that there is a change in amplitude. This 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 spectrum is actually jumping up and down, which is actually determining that okay, you know what? You have a spike somewhere, then you don't have a spike, then you have a spike, then you have it has a very uh, straightforward response and you can also observe this in frequency domain as well so where do i encounter this type of noise uh, this is generally coming in from like you know your uh, from your hardware in a sense like if you have a faulty hardware and when you are when you're checking it with your oscilloscope and things like that this is what you would see in your oscilloscope by spike or something in frequency domain that is moving up and down so this is generally where this is coming from uh, so so that's the idea behind this uh, particular tutorial was to understand filter taps um, to understand actually by looking at noise how i can visualize my noise and i don't know if i went over uniform noise uniform noise are basically just quite uniform as compared to other noises um, and generally this is a sort of uniform noises we can model it uh, like a quantization noise or something like that <coughs> when we're working with quantization uh, this is the type of noise that you encounter so generally in between your adc so adc is performing sampling and quantization and things like that so this noise is quite uniform as compared to other noises that we have um, available so i hope you understand this tutorial if you have any questions uh, leave it in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching